The reason you don't focus on creating the systems for your business is not because you think that you don't need them. It's because it's too big of a task and you basically don't know where to start. People typically overcomplicate this, but in this video, we're gonna make it super easy. I'm gonna show you what I call the 4C process. And this process alone help business owners save more than 20 hours per week. The first part of the process is the customer journey. This is the most critical one. That is why it is always the first that I do with every one of my clients. And if we get it wrong, everything's gonna be fucked up. And what we want to do in this process is to extract from your business owner brain all the process that you go through with every one of your clients since the moment that they book the first call with you until the very last step of your after sales process. Why do we want this? Well, one, so this information doesn't just live in your head. And second, so everyone in your company can take a look at that, don't ask you, and understand the whole process 100%. And this part of the process starts in a software like this one, Whimsical. And there are only two steps that we have to follow to get this right. And we want to get this right because the other three parts of the process that we're going to talk later depend 100% on what we do here. So the first step is we are going to create one square per action that we take with our customer. This is how we currently do things. So we're going to go step by step and what happens after a call, for example. So we create the proposal. So we just go through the whole process. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect, if there are some missing things, if there are too many things, if it's too complex, it doesn't matter. We just want to put what is inside of here in the screen. And then once we get all this process over here, what we want is to go through it again and we can now find ways to simplify it. So let's say maybe I, I don't have to create this proposal, maybe this can be automated. Okay, so this is gonna be an automated process. Uh, maybe we don't need mood boring, I don't know. We simplify it. Also, what I don't want is to have a lot of different ramification that makes everything so complicated. So we just want, if possible, one straight line. The way to get to this straight line, which is a very streamlined process, is by asking ourselves, do we really need this extra option? If this is not bringing revenue, if this is not increasing the customer satisfaction, then probably we don't need it. And then we can group the different parts of the process in what I call notion statuses. These are the statuses that then we are going to be using in step number two of the 4C process. And as you can see, everything here is separated by statuses, even if they are not very readable. And this brings us to the second part of the 4C process, which is client fulfillment. And this starts to be the system itself. This is where our team or ourselves are actually going to execute on what we have defined in the first part of the process. And it can look something like this. We're going to have one database in Notion. And within this database, we're going to have the same statuses. You see, waiting for first call, qualify maybe later. We're going to have the same statuses as we have in here. So we are just copying and pasting. And I like to separate this in customer journey and client fulfillment. So this is once the client has already converted. And this is when the client is not a client yet. It's just a lead. And now, why was it so important to define the customer journey first? Because inside of the customer journey, for example, creating proposal, we have this task to do within this status, for example or even within design onboarding, we have all these different tasks to do. So what can we do in Notion? We can automate that, for example, every time that a project gets to design onboarding, a list of predefined tasks get created automatically. We can do so by using Notion automations. And these tasks, of course, can be assigned to the person that always needs to do this or to the position within our company that always needs to do this. But we haven't seen the best part of this, which is the third part of this process called core documentation. If you've read any business book about systemizing companies and everything, they're always talking about documentation, SOPs, etc. But that always sounded so boring to me and so broad and so never ending that I never got to actually creating those documents. I also didn't know where to start. So why am I calling this part of the process core documentation? Because in this part of the process, we are going to be focusing on only the documents that we really need to create 
first. And which are those documents? Well, if we go back to our customer journey, here we have actually the list of all the documents that we need to create. Document number one, how to send a questionnaire. Document number two, how to send the mood board to the client. Document number three, what to do when the design is ready and we want to send it to the client. So I believe you start getting the idea why this part was so important. Because if we nail this, then the rest of the implementation is basically just copying and pasting. So what does this mean? These tasks that were created automatically in the second part of the process are also going to be linked automatically to the document that explains how to do the task. For example, if we go to the full website project, here we have two tasks with the SOPs automatically linked to them. Add marker IO to Webflow. Mm, how to do this or how to add the SEO data. I go here and I just check it, okay? And if the person assigned, which in this case is myself, don't know how to do this, he will just have to follow step by step and that is it. Me as a business owner, I will not have to spend my time explaining this person how to do the thing. And then put yourself in the shoes of an employee. Every employee can have his personal dashboard. So how would you as an employee feel whenever you receive the tasks from your employer with the project, which is the client, and how to do the thing? And all of this happens automatically. How more willing are you gonna be to stick to this company? And you as the employee just have to stay in this view to know what you need to get done and how you need to do it. That's it. So this means that your company is no longer dependent on the people that work in it, but dependent on the systems that run it. This is kind of the same as, for example, McDonald's. Do you think McDonald's care that an employee leaves? No, because he's somewhat replaceable because that new person just have to follow the same processes and systems. And then at the end of all this documentation process, you will end up with something such as this. All the knowledge within your company fully structured and linked automatically to the tasks that need to be linked to. And by the way, before I share the fourth part of the process and vital one, I wanna add something extra to this video. I wanna show you how implementing this very system helped a real life business in how we implemented everything step by step so you can do the same. It's the case of a Webflow agency whose owner James was able to free up 80% of the time that he was spending developing websites by fully delegating client work. You can find the blueprint of a wildly efficient agency in the description of this video. Okay, and onto the fourth and vital part of this system. It is called crew accountability structures. This is one of the most overlooked parts of a system but I see this as the guardrails for your team. They will help them execute and know what to focus on. And you as the owner, you will have full visibility of how people are performing and when they are not performing well, so you can take action. There are two types and which type is gonna depend on the position of the person. The first one is performance indicators. When we set this right, it is magic because it's going to paint the real time picture of whether the employee is executing as we want him to do. For example, for a web developer, this can be developing five pages every week. For a salesperson, this can be closing 40% of calls every week, and we can track them daily. For example, we can have a dashboard like this one with the objective of the developer of five pages per week, and we have seen that the average that he has is three. So he's two under. So maybe we have to talk to him. Maybe the objective is too high, or maybe he has a problem that we can help with. And finally, the second structure are checklists. I mean, checklists have been used for, I don't know, since I have memory. Planes in the airports use it, hotels use it. So why don't we use it in our businesses? And this is as simple as thinking which tasks every member of your team has to do on a daily or weekly basis. For example, being said over here, have to do these three things daily send beginning of the day emails and at the end of the day email and comment the task status in all your active tasks. So just by looking at this, we can see that he has not done it on Thursday and also on Friday. So we may wanna talk to him. Also, this is going to serve Vincent as a reminder of the things that he needs to do every day. So it, it gives us visibility and him accountability. And now you can see that having all this visible in a dashboard like this is gonna be super easy for us to spot 
where to pay attention and who to talk to to solve the situation. With these four systems in place, I can assure you that your business will be able to scale to 1 million and beyond because now you're able to hire and those hires are going to stay in your company because everything is so organized. As we said in the beginning of this video, systems doesn't have to be hard. We just need to focus on the systems that are really going to move the needle. And throughout my experience, these four are the ones that really move the needle. Of course, then we can iterate, we can improve, we can add new things, but this is the base of everything. Well, don't forget to check the blueprint that is in the description of this video so you can copy the same steps and nothing else from my side. And as always, hasta la próxima.